I have a um, little known verse here of a song because it's just like in church, you only sing the first, second, and fourth verse. We usually leave out one. Well, the Star Spangled Banner has a separate verse. Oh, thus be it ever when freemen shall stand between their loved home and the war's desolation. Blessed with victory and peace, may the heaven-rescued land praise the power that hath made and preserved us a nation. Then conquer we must when our cause it is just, and this be our motto, in God is our trust, and the star-spangled banner in triumph shall wave or the land of the free and the home of the brave. Conservatives don't get to celebrate freedom very often. We typically like to bellyache over the loss of such things. But the United States Supreme Court, however, has made a monumental shift. We'll talk about two major decisions and what our founding fathers have to say about freedom. All of that today on the July 4th day early edition of the Palmetto Family Matters Show. Welcome into the program. Justin Hall, Mitch Prosser here with you. It is Monday, July 3rd, 10.58 a.m., in the year of our Lord, 2023. Yeah. We're not talking about any breaking news today. What we will do, though, is we will set you up. Hopefully, you are ex- enjoying an extended Independence Day weekend. Some of us do not get that opportunity. We're not afforded that opportunity because we're hard at work. That's okay. We'll enjoy it tomorrow. July 4th, Independence Day, actual Independence Day. This is the actual day. That is not June 19th. July 4th is Independence Day. Shot across the bow early on on the show, and that's okay. Well, yeah. The United States Supreme Court, Mitch, did uphold two two freedoms. Both of them actually mentioned very early on in that thing called the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. The one being freedom of religion. We we don't have much to get into with with the with the Groff decision here, um, but this decision, basically, the court in a unanimous, by the way, nine zero yes. decision, upheld for lack of a better phrase, Title Seven of the Civil Rights Act, which basically says that employees of faith should be afforded some level of exceptions based on religious freedom. This goes to this United States postal worker yes. who did not want to work on Sundays because Sunday is a day of rest. It is the Sabbath for many. And he did not feel it was right to work. He started at the postal service before they ran mail on Sundays and before they partnered with Amazon to run packages on Sundays. And it is not an undue hardship or burden on the business to yes. give a Christian a Sunday off. For those of you that want maybe a little more in-depth, um, and you mentioned the undue burden and hardship, it goes to the de minimis test, mm-hmm. and that de minimis test basically um, works through the tension between the worker and the employer, right. so the employer and the employee in that relationship. And uh, we spent some time with our friends at First Liberty over the weekend and their explanation. And we spent some time with our friends at ADF. And I just want to go ahead <laughs> yes. and throw this out there right out, right out of the gate uh, today on the July 4th episode. Uh, you know, I'm grateful for our friends at First Liberty and Alliance Defending Freedom who are continually in front of the Supreme Court. They're continually fighting for these issues because, listen, if it can happen to the cake baker and the candlestick maker, it can happen to you. And if it can happen to a guy who just uh, wants to be left alone in order to worship on a Sunday uh, or during the day of his choice to worship, then it can happen to you. And if it can happen to the young lady building the website, it can certainly happen to you. And so Alliance Defending Freedom and First Liberty, they are on the forefront of this, and they are partners in in, in what we do here at Palmetto Family. Thank you to them. Um, it really boils down to exactly what you just said, mm-hmm. and I think it's extremely important for us to understand that um, believers, and, and I'll say this, uh, not just Christians, um, but yeah. those in America, because we are a land of religious freedom, mm-hmm. those who want the freedom to worship uh, ought to be given uh, and, and exercise their religious beliefs, uh, the right of conscience, ought to be given that freedom 
in the most minimally invasive way possible. Correct. Uh, so, so if an employer says, I need you to work on uh, Sunday. Well, I, I can't work on Sunday. And I remember this even back in the day as a teenager working retail and how we had to parse this out and that sort of thing. Um, I think it's important for us to understand this is a monumental case um, because it's going to open the door uh, for some other cases as well. Um, but I, I'm just so grateful for what First Liberty did on this case. Absolutely. Now we move to the 303 Creative case. Yes. 303 Creative versus Alenis. That basically Lori Smith is expanding her graphic design business. She is now wanting to do wedding websites. The leftist talking point is that there was no case here, that she preemptively filed this in an effort to strip LGBTQ plus IA people of their rights and freedoms, and that's just incorrect. Basically, this goes back to Jack the Cake Baker. Yes. Where Colorado has this anti discrimination act, which in and of itself is discriminatory, by the way. And you can just call up these folks and say, well, I'm gay and you need to serve me. And they no, that actually goes against my beliefs. And then you're the bigot and you're the awful person. Uh, there are a couple things in here. I actually read through the case here on, on this one and, and pretty interesting stuff. want to make sure that the point gets made. CBS News, when they broke, when this decision broke, claimed that this woman did not want to serve gay people. This is straight from the decision. Mrs. Smith is, quote, willing to work with all people regardless of classification such as race, creed, sexual orientation, and gender, and, quote, will gladly create custom graphics and websites for clients of any sexual orientation. She will not produce content that contradicts biblical truth regardless of who orders it. Ms. Smith's belief is that marriage is a union between one man and one woman, and that is a seriously held conviction. Supreme Court Justice Neil Gorsuch delivered the majority opinion of the court in this case in which he took a flamethrower to the left wing of the bench um, inside the Supreme Court and and, and at large the United States of America. Now, I am not one that trumpets all conservative justices all the time. I believe that there have been significant cases recently where Amy Coney Barrett and Brett Kavanaugh have both ruled in ways that I disagree with. Neil Gorsuch has ruled on multiple occasions, including in the Bostock language that I disagree with, where um, there's a little bit too much afforded, and I believe they rule in a bit of error, but I believe that's a good thing. Uh, not so much a way how they ruled, but in the fact that they aren't beholden to every single conservative viewpoint that I have, well, if that makes sense. It, possible it's a balance just, of the court. Yeah, they're just between a you know a rock and a heartache. That's true. Well, I think it's a hard place, but oh, anyway, Whatever. not the point. Supreme Court Justice Gorsuch continues. The framers designed the free speech clause of the First Amendment to protect, quote, the freedom to think as you will and to speak as you think. By allowing all views to flourish, the framers understood that we may test and improve our own thinking both as individuals and as a nation. As cases illustrate, he lists three, uh, one dealing with the Boy Scouts, one dealing with a veterans parade in Massachusetts, and one other that's escaping my mind as as it stands right now. As in those cases illustrated, quote, the First Amendment protects an individual's right to speak his mind regardless of whether the government considers his speech sensible and well-intentioned or deeply misguided. Mm-hmm. Now, and, and there are two juxtaposing views here in this case, Mitch. It is the Colorado Anti-Discrimination Act right. running up against the Constitution of the United States of America. Right. And Supreme Court Justice Gorsuch makes a very good point. When a state public accommodations law and the Constitution collide, there can be no question which must prevail. Justice Gorsuch, I believe, hates this law. Yeah. It is and and yeah. he probably should because it's unfair and it's discriminatory, just as the affirmative action statutes were. So they rule that just to give you a you know, spoiler alert, they rule in favor of 303 Creative, saying that this mm-hmm. business owner has the right to practice their business in alignment with their religious views. Mm-hmm. This does not mean that they can refuse service to anyone for any reason. Correct. However, they can hold to religious belief, and they cannot be pressed down upon by right. the government. Right. And this goes back to Baronel Stutzman, who was, you know, honestly laid down her professional career uh, for this for this sort of 
case to be determined. I mean, she she gave her professional career for this. Jack um, in in masterpiece cake. Jack Phillips in Colorado. Uh, and I'll I'll speak more to that specifically in just a moment. I think what's important for people to understand is it's not like Baronelle never did flower arrangements for uh, gay or lesbian or people of that you know uh, persuasion persuasion or religious ideology. Um, it's like it's not like she said I I hate gay people get out of my store. No, in fact there were several times that I believe she did flower arrangements for the same couple that sued the pants off of her. Uh, same is true of Jack Phillips from Masterpiece uh, Cakes. Uh, you know, I go back to my friends Dick and Betty Odgard from uh, Iowa, who I met back in 2015, who were, you know, sued in their wedding chapel. One-stop shop for weddings was shut down because uh, a homosexual couple came in and, and shut them down. These kind of people have continually uh, pled their case, and they have been the the impetus for change. And, right. and finally, we have a ruling that is consistent, not just with conservative ideology, because I think that's what some people boil this down to. Well, it's just your viewpoint versus their viewpoint, and we could even call it worldview. It's just your worldview versus their worldview, and you won. No, it, it, that may be partially the case, but ultimately what this comes down to, as you've pointed out in Gorsuch's opinion, the majority opinion here, this is a constitutional battle. This is a struggle for the framework and the foundation, and just for another alliterative F, the fabric of our nation. Right. So the Constitution is the founding document of our nation and the bedrock for what we hold to be legal. I mean, it's just how we operate as a nation. Okay, these are the frame. This is the framework that we not only have agreed upon, but this this is what keeps us moving, and honestly, is what's made us so great. That is under assault. The Constitution is under assault, whether it's from the state of Colorado, whether it's from the LGBTQIA plus and percent division sign, it's under assault. And I just straight up and honest, there are certain Christian groups out there who have sought to destroy the Constitution of the United States of America, to wield it as a mace or a uh, club or use it as a bully pulpit to prove their case. Uh, that's not how the Constitution of the United States right. works. It is a framework. It is not a weapon. Um, and I, I'm, I'm so grateful for what Neil Gorsuch wrote. I'm so grateful for these nine justices in the case, uh, in the um, postal workers case mm -hmm. and the Groff case, and now in this, that 6 3 opinion, how they upheld this. Uh, I, I think this is interesting here what uh, ADF puts out. In the question of how this case is different than the masterpiece case, where Jack Phillips has been sued, I think four times now. In the Colorado, Maybe a fifth. Uh, yeah, they they answer it this way. Uh, well, I, I'm I'm skipping a little bit down here. They say, but because the free exercise violation was so clear in masterpiece, the court did not take uh, did not address Jack's free speech claim. Now in 303 Creative, which is the technical or the short term for the. Supreme Court case, the court has taken up the question of whether the government can force someone to say something they don't believe and finally resolve this question, yet again affirming that all Americans have the right to be free from government-compelled speech. And a lot of people are saying, well, as you said, this is prefacial. This is something that's you know an answering a question that hasn't even been asked yet or cre creating a solution to a problem that doesn't exist. They're gaslighting. Then that's okay then. If yeah. You won't mind. Right. That's right. So what the Supreme Court did here was protect and defend free speech, especially when it comes to deeply seated religious beliefs that are closely held by an individual and said, you are free. Free. Not only in your religious right but also in your ability to speak sure. or not to speak correct justice gorgeous gorsuch pardon me then my favorite moment of his opinion decides to take a flamethrower to the left side of the bench it is difficult to read the dissent the dissent was authored by justice soda sonia sotomayor uh kagan and katanji brown jackson the smartest person on the court decided <coughs> to coincide with that it is difficult to read by the way how awkward would it must it have been for an affirmative action hired to the Supreme Court have to deal with that affirmative action decision? It is difficult to read the dissent and conclude that we are looking at the same case. None of their answers the questions that we face today. None of this answers the questions that we face today. Can a state, this is the question, can a state force someone who provides her own expressive service to abandon her conscience and speak its preferred message instead of her own. When the dissent finally gets around to this question more than halfway into his opinion, it reimagines the facts of this case from top to 
bottom. The dissent even suggests that our decision today is akin to endorsing a separate but equal regime mm. that would allow law firms to refuse women admission into partnership, restaurants to deny service to black Americans, or businesses seeking employees to post something like a white applicants only sign. Pure fiction all. In some places, the dissent gets so turned around about the facts that it opens fire on its own position. For instance, while stressing that a Colorado company cannot refuse, quote, the full and equal enjoyment of its services, end quote, based on a customer's protected status, the dissent assures us that a company selling creative services to the public does have a right to, quote, decide what messages to include or not to include. But if that is true, what are we even debating? Instead of addressing the party's stipulations about the case actually before us, the dissent spends much of its time adrift on a sea of hypotheticals about <laughs> photographers, stationers, and others asking if they too provide expressive services covered by the First Amendment. If anything is truly dispiriting here, it is the dissent's failure to take seriously this court's enduring commitment to protecting the speech rights of all comers, no matter how controversial or even repug repugnant many may find the message at hand. Perhaps the dissent finds these possibilities untroubling because it trusts state governments to coerce only enlightened speech. But if that is the calculation, it is a dangerous one indeed. Today, however, the dissent abandons what this court's cases have recognized time and time again. A commitment to speech for only some messages and some persons is no commitment at all. And if liberty means anything at all, it means the right to tell people what they do not want to hear. Gorsuch quoting George Orwell. Anytime I can quote George Orwell, it's a good great. day. He ends his opinion with this. But tolerance, not coercion, is our nation's answer. Yes. The First Amendment envisions the United States as a rich and complex place where all persons are free to think and speak as they wish, not as the government demands. Because Colorado seeks to deny that promise, the judgment is reversed uh, justice gorsuch does an excellent job in, in his opinion i encourage you to read it aligning the understanding of free speech before in certain cases mm -hmm. and how they align with this case and he highlights i believe mitch the true misunderstanding of the freedom of speech now obviously you'll hear people say well you can't yell fire in a crowded theater that's not the same thing yeah and what we're seeing here is a government push a liberal, elitist, leftist, demagogish push right. that if you do not speak the way we want you to speak, you will be reprimanded. Well, and it's not like we're singing the McDonald's theme song from 1983 here. It, Breakfast is just for you and McDonald's? Yeah. It, it, this stuff matters. Sure. This, it, 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 you know, what, what frustrates me is, you know, the same arguments that um, KBJ and Sotomayor and Kagan are arguing about in Plessy versus Ferguson and separate but equal. Hello, your court, the court, the bench, well, probably not literally, but the, the seats that you're sitting in, justice has got that right a long time ago in overturning an errant and totally ridiculous And we wish it would have uh, been case. sooner. Yes, absolutely. You know, th the same argument is akin to saying that the gas station owner who – has a sign on the door that says no shoes, no shirt, no service, now has no leg to stand on. How ridiculous is that notion? I own a business, and I get to choose how I operate in that business. Now, can I... They're calling They're us. Calling They're us. calling We're us. We're in trouble uh, That's okay. We're just going to keep rolling. Um, I don't... I don't think there's any case where a person could wield their business and the authority of that business as a once again as a bully pulpit or as a club to bash others with. However, I think within the bounds of a normal trade and business, a free commerce, uh, unbelievable that free we would society. Even, yeah, uh, you know, I think I think it's perfectly perfectly normal to say, you know what, I I can't serve you. I think it even some of these cases. Um, and I'm going back a little bit and I don't have, I, I I've got to be careful how I say this. I believe, and I could be wrong here, but in other cases, there, there were instances where some of these other business owners said, I can't do this for you, but so-and-so can. Yes. I'm going to point you in a different direction. Hello. Track. And, 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 and I'll make sure that they take good care of you. Yeah. In other words, it, I'll make sure that you're getting a comparable rate, if not a better rate. And, and instead, the religion of the left turns with pitchforks and, 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 right. and torches and wants to burn the place down. I, no, 
No, that's unacceptable. That's not the America that we live in, and that's not the America that's set up by the Constitution of the United States. Right, and that Constitution is now we shift from these Supreme Court decisions, which, again, I believe protect and ensure f- bedrock freedoms for our nation for generations to come. And I'll just say this. There might be things that I disagree with the former president on as it currently stands. However, if he were to come out right now in his campaign and just walk to the microphone and say, Neil Gorsuch, Brett Kavanaugh, and Amy Coney Barrett and walk away, yeah, that'd be a very compelling argument because now I want you to think about this. These cases appear before a court that three nominees from a Hillary Clinton presidency were confirmed. Mm-hmm. How would these be ruled differently? extremely like yeah. 180 degree difference the probably the lasting legacy of the trump presidency will be the supreme court in which we're probably seeing the most conservative supreme court possibly ever in our lifetime in our doubt. lifetime for sure monumental cases being decided life being protected uh second amendment rights being upheld freedom of religion rights being upheld freedom of speech rights being upheld uh affirmative action being crushed uh, an unconstitutional push to forgive student loan debt from the executive branch. I'm sorry. Crushed. I know. I guess I should pay that back <laughs> now, right? Um, however, you put it. Well, I think this court. And has I'll done go back to that because I've got a. I've got to insert you know my opinion into that. Consider the value of what you get for free. I get free Dunkin'. What's well, <laughs> darn good coffee? Um, you know, I, I would argue probably the best coffee around. You know, not. Speaking of any, any individual coffee shops, um, you know, for a person who's griping, and, and here's all that was. That's all, and, and Nancy Pelosi hit the nail on the head. You'll never hear me say that again, unless it involves Paul. Um, ooh, too soon? Sorry. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, wow, I can't believe I just did that. Anyway, yeah. we're going to keep moving. Uh, she said this was a, this was a grab. From the Biden administration. It was a political ploy. Yeah. Let's try to get votes. And, and you better believe there'll be something new. I mean, they were out on the White House lawn. As soon as this uh, case was determined, saying, we got a bigger plan. Don't worry. It's going to be great. Uh, also, I love how when the court rules in favor of the Constitution, this current president says it's unconstitutional. I can't believe it. Yeah, well, to Come be on. fair, to be fair, he was there when it was drafted, so maybe he does know a little bit. Is he um, one of the signers? I, I, well, he probably wrote the preamble. Um the point is, now that we move from the Supreme Court decisions to, obviously, as of this recording, tomorrow is July 4th. Tomorrow is Independence Day. So either you're listening to this later on on July the 3rd, or you're listening to us while you're grilling your hamburgers or your hot dogs or roasting your marshmallows or whatever you're doing. What do you, uh, just, what do you normally eat on July 4th? Like, what's the barbecue. go-to? Barbecue? Like, Bar- barbecue, like pulled pork. But not like Yankee barbecue. It's like... Barbecue for Yankees is hot dogs, hamburgers. No, no. Barbecue, barbecue is something you eat. It is not pork. something you do. Correct. You don't barbecue. You eat barbecue and you grill. Uh, typically, it's typically it's you know pulled pork barbecue, potato salad, coleslaw, mustard, green beans, mustard based. Uh, I'm an American. Um, Go. Cool. Uh, either mustard based or pepper vinegar. I don't. I don't dabble. I don't dabble in the the tomato base because that's yeah. that's um, no offense to anyone who's watching, but I'll just take my stand here that that might be otherworldly um let's talk about july 4th let's (laughs) talk about independence day for a second because i believe it it is always good for us i i'm a person who loves history i i I love reading about our nation's history and and where we come from and what our framers were thinking and what our founding fathers were thinking and i think we have to start with the preamble of the constitution i have it typed up here but we the people of the united states in order to form a more perfect union in order to form a more perfect union, so in order to get to a more perfect union, we, in this constitution, we establish justice, we ensure domestic tranquility, uh, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare. This is the role of the government, by the mm-hmm. way, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves to ourselves and our posterity. We do ordain and establish this constitution for the United States of America. We go a little further uh, This is actually a letter from then General George Washington Mm -hmm. on December 31st, 1776. They they had just defeated in a surprise attack thanks to some work of some spies. The Hessians Mm -hmm. had a major victory, possibly one of the early turning points of the war, the Revolution. Uh, He writes this to his soldiers who were, enlistments were up, it was the end of the year, enlistments were up, and he was trying to get them to re-enlist. 
Quote, My brave fellows, you have done all I asked you to do and more than can be reasonably expected, but your country is at stake. Your wives, your houses, and all that you hold dear. You have worn yourselves out with fatigue and hardships, but we know not how to spare you. If you will consent to stay one month longer, you will render that service to the cause of liberty and to your country, which you probably can never do under any other circumstances. Three days later, they won the battle at Princeton. Mm-hmm. Propelling, again, we, we, we have another three years at that point yeah. before victory is ultimately secured at Yorktown. I, lo- I love what he, he he understands that there's a skin in the game. Yes. There's a claim to be to be made. And, you know, I go back to the signers of the Declaration and, you know, John Adams or, yeah, John Hancock and some of these others. Um, and I love what the end of the Constitution says, right? Above, or I'm sorry, the Declaration right above John Hancock's name. It says, and for the support of this Declaration with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, uh, God, God. We, Capital mutu- P providence. We, we mutually pledge our lives our fortunes, and our sacred honor. They understood. I mean, these men lost their lives, their families, their homes, their livelihood, everything. Um, Some of their families were brutally murdered um, because they believed in this. They believed in the Constitution. Well, the Constitution would come later, but they believed in this. So They believed in these ideals of a free nation. Absolutely. Uh, I have several more here uh, that I think are good. Hit us. Thomas Jefferson, on April 24, 1796, quote, Timid men prefer mm. the calm of despotism to the boisterous sea of liberty. In November of 1787, in a letter to one of his generals, he writes, The tree of liberty must be refreshed mm. from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants. It is its natural manure. Samuel Adams, in an article in the Boston Gazette on October 14, 1771, five years a little less than five years before the Declaration of Independence. The truth is, all might be free if they valued freedom hmm. and defended it as they ought. Edmund Burke, in 1775, freedom and not servitude is the cure of anarchy, as religion and not atheism is the true remedy for superstition. Benjamin Franklin in Maxims and Morals in 1807 wrote, Freedom is not a gift bestowed upon us by other men, but a right that belongs to us by the laws of God and nature. It- what kind of government have you given us, Mr. Franklin? A republic, if you can keep, keep it. it. We go a little further. Those are our founding fathers, but we do have a a, a very brief speech from the the sixteenth president of the United States. Uh, four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty, liberty, dedicated. and dedicated to the proposition that. All, All men. men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who have gave their lives here that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, <laughs> but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work with which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task of remaining before us that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from this earth. That was Abraham Lincoln on November 19, 1863, the Gettysburg Address. This is actually a straight pull from the last known copy that he pinned himself on a napkin on a train yes maybe a little legend to that but yeah pretty cool what we have in these documents and what we have here in these quotes and and i i don't have much from our first president of the united states there are a few more from john adams and a few others and um, you can pick and choose i cringe and quite frankly get upset at the notion that our founding that our founding principles are not conceived in liberty and freedom but also that our founding was not overtly christian in its mm-hmm. nature there are preachers there are pastors who I listened who I have listened to who said that it is without a doubt that america was never a christian nation and to that i tell you you are wrong 
while not all of our founders were Christian, I mean, Thomas Jefferson, wildly probably considered a deist, and Benjamin Franklin, I don't know if he ever yeah. came to a saving faith in Christ, and that's neither here nor there. However, the the undergirding of our Constitution, the undergirding of the Declaration of Independence, the undergirding of the leadership and the and the and the code and the honor that has been set before this country is at its root, yeah, Christian. Well, Judeo Christian. As a student of of a student, uh, one who's delved in and and really done a deep dive on those two guys themselves. Um, Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin, because I wanted to answer the question. You know, the 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 liberal left today just beats you with that. These were the two most secular of our founding fathers. It's it's so ironic. That's that's like you know comparing, um, saying that Charlie Culberson is the least talented of all the Braves on their lineup. Yeah, but he'd still beat you in a home run derby. He's still right. his fielding percentage is far better than yours would ever be. That's it's, true. It's actually. unfair to to compare uh, apples with you know hand grenades at this point. They're just <clears throat> th- there's no comparison here. Thomas Jefferson is a very complex man. I, even in the regards to to slavery, he wanted to add a, a portion to uh, the Declaration, which he penned, which uh, enumerated the rights that slaves would have and yep. give them an off ramp of slavery. He was not allowed to do that because it wasn't unanimous, and all uh, declarations had to be unanimous. Uh, he was also in his later life surrounded by deists uh, in Charlottesville, Virginia, and so some of the writing that an older Jefferson writes is very nuanced and and honestly it, it can be clouded uh, his judgment could be clouded at times based on the the weak need leadership or lack of leadership from the pulpit surrounding him but he always he always believed that uh, you know religious freedom was to be cherished and it was to be placed high on a pedestal you know I I, I think back to Franklin, you know, Franklin, and there's this awesome story, and I know we're, we're limited on time here, but Franklin, um, you know, looked to the divine hand of providence several times. You know, the, we, we've got the British coming to destroy everything that we care about, and these storms crop up, and God, you know, it, it, it was seen by our framers and founders that God was looking out for us. You know they're they're coming in, in, into March and and a storm crops up and they back away and that gives people in this town the ability to get away or they just tur- turn about face and and leave the British do and Benjamin Franklin was one of the first to continually say but for the divine hand of providence this nation would not exist I mean he himself spoke to the idea of religious freedom multiple times as many of our Framers did so. It, it's uniquely, uh, I'll just say it, uniquely stupid to hear the notion that oh, these these are the most deist or the most liberal or the most you know unreligious of our founding fathers. Once again, that that's like saying that uh, you know I, I'm trying to come up with another good comparison here. It, it's unfair to judge men and women for that matter 250 years ago with the precepts, principles, and benchmarks of today. It just doesn't work. We continue on in this look really quickly before we shift and and change the conversation just a bit. More recent voices of American history and present. General Dwight D. Eisenhower, 34th President of the United States, be like Ike. The best Freedom has its life in the hearts, the actions, the spirit of men, and so it must be daily earned and refreshed. Else, like a flower cut from its life-giving root, it will wither and die. We know well, the 40th president of the United States, President Ronald Reagan, before he was president, said this, Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it on to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on to them to do the same. Or one day, we will spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it was once like in the United States. When men were free. When men were free. George W. Bush said this. George W. Bush said that freedom is not our gift to the world, Hmm. but it is God's gift to humanity. And that's where we kind of shift as well, because as as, as we've said on this show plenty of times, this this is about approaching current events 
and topics from a biblical worldview. That's right. And I think no, there's no easier parallel mm-hmm. than Independence Day because Americans view freedom as one thing. It is not some far-off pipe dream. It is real. It is tangible. We have it here. Go to any other nation and then come back here and tell me you don't have it here. Mm-hmm. But adding to that, the Christian has an even deeper view of freedom. Uh, has, a, has, a, has a deeper view of Certainly. what freedom means. Uh, Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians, we actually call it two Corinthians, uh, <laughs> writes that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there, there is, freedom. is freedom. And Freedom for, for what? Or from what? And later, in, his, in, a, in a letter to the church and, at Galatia, he says it is for freedom that Christ set us free. Now, that bucks up against the idea that he writes in Romans that mm-hmm. because we're free from sin, we become slaves to God because ultimately the freedom you have in Christ is not freedom to do whatever you want. Yeah. It's the, it's the freedom to sure. do. And, and that, that word yeah. slave there, and, and I won't go into the original languages. You but You want to give it, us a Hebrew and Greek real quick? No, now? no. Uh, <laughs> but the original language carries with it the idea of really – just a, a bond servant or one who mm-hmm. is I- indebted willingly indebted to another mm-hmm. and so i mean the freedom you know we hear this all the time freedom isn't free, free and it costs something and we it's know not. you know and and if, if getting a little preachy that's okay get a little preachy and we're not ashamed of it we we're unashamedly a christian uh, we're, we're two Christian guys, and, and what we do here at Palmetto Family is from a biblical worldview and a Christian perspective. You know, it it's important for us to understand that the freedom that we were blessed with in this nation wasn't free. It was bought with the blood of patriots, as you read, the, the, Thomas tree, Jefferson. Yep. the tree of liberty. The blood of Jesus Christ is what makes men and women who choose to embrace that free gift, it's what makes them free, but it cost him Dearly, it cost him his life. It cost him, you know, of course, we know the beauty of that is that he's resurrected, and he is continually resurrecting and just, it, it, no, he is alive and ever interceding on our behalf. I think it's important for Christians who, and and, and, and as we work through this, you know, I think we can become jaded because we conflate the idea of, of religious freedom and freedom in Christ with freedom as a nation. And if we're not careful, we, we equate or conflate the two. And there, you know, I'm, I'm not doomsday or anything like that. Not going to give you a, you know, buy this bucket of food for $25. There may come a day when we are far less free, even religiously in America, but the freedom that we have in Christ, the ultimate pay to, payment that he gave will never go away. No. And we will be free for eternity in right. Him. Right, and I. what's interesting is that on July the 4th, on Independence Day, as Americans, we celebrate freedom from tyranny. We celebrate that our forefathers and our founding fathers felt it right and good to fight for freedom from yeah. tyranny, from the tyrant King George, of course, and <laughs> uh, and they secure that victory at... at ultimately at the Yorktown, or in Yorktown, and we we owe a lot to those folks. We have an IOU. We have an IOU, and I think that it behooves of us to continually think back to that and to remember where we've come from yeah. uh, in, in this nation as we mark 247 years this year of being a nation. And I think for the Christian, I think it is perfectly right and good to look up to our creator. Yeah. I'm, I'm without Albert Moeller, but I'll use his phrasing of that, our creator, and say thank you for the yeah. blessing of living in a free nation and one that is continually free. However, for the Christian, as we celebrate July the 4th, we can also celebrate doubly Mm -hmm. in that not only are we free on this side, but we are also, with the payment of of Christ and his his life and his blood, we are free on both sides of eternity. We are free forever uh, in Christ to follow God and to 
uh, and to live according to his law and his precepts and according to his will for our lives. And I think that's such, that's the beauty of July 4th. That's why it's one of my favorite holidays on the yeah. calendar. Um, July 4th used now, now I, I will tell you this, a little bit of whataboutism. July 4th used to be this mystical day. Everyone mm. red, white, and blue. Riding bald eagles. Flags waving. And I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm older. I don't want to compare it to Christmas, right? But I feel like there's some level of... Some of it's gone. Yeah. Some of well, it's gone. And some think, of it's dissipated. I think... Um, Is it idealism? Well, yeah. I, I, and my mind goes back, and this will resonate with you, maybe to some of you, maybe not. We're both baseball nuts and junkies. My mind goes back to the Sandlot. Oh, yeah. Well, it's the only night game oh, of the year. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Oh, I, that, that clip yeah, that, just came on my oh, social media man, yesterday. With Ray... Charles yeah. singing, uh, you know, beautiful for spacious skies for amber waves of grain, and you know the, and and uh, I'm trying to remember the narrator's name, but just this beautiful poetic threading of a baseball game and hot dogs, and and then they look up and they're mesmerized, and by the game the fireworks, stops, and the game stops, but there's only one who's still got his mind on the game. Of course, we know that's Benny Rodriguez. Um, Benny's going to go on to play for the Dodgers. Yeah, yeah. which, <laughs> whatever. whatever. Uh, <laughs> but I, I think as as kids, that's that's what we see, you know. And unfortunately, as many um, American Christian believers, they look at Christmas and Easter as, oh, it's just another day off. July 4th, oh, it's just another day off. We're going to roast, you know, a pig or eat the fatted calf or go blow $500 on fireworks. Literally just take a $100 bill out of your pocket and light it on that. fire. Um, and the you're right. The the grandeur. The wonder. The wonder is gone. And if, if, if anything, maybe we can – call each other back into a sense of wonder childlike not not over not ooh, like Chris, uh, uh, you know yeah. red white and blue riding bald eagles or anything well, you know. i don't know i mean history did begin on july 4 1776 <laughs> i think i think my my admonition can i use that my Ad, encouragement my encouragement Justin. my encouragement to you whether this is july 4th you're listening to it or whether july 4th is tomorrow when you're listening to this perhaps maybe just for a second tomorrow Read the Declaration of Independence. Maybe. Uh, don't read the whole Constitution. You could. You to, could. You could I mean, pocket. it wouldn't take um, more than an ten, hour. Yeah, if that. If you read fast, it could take 20 minutes. Um, take a second. Or listen to it. Or listen to yeah. it. Think about your freedom. Hmm. Think about the men and women who have sacrificed for that freedom. And perhaps maybe if you're shooting fireworks like I know my family will tomorrow mm -hmm. night. Uh, you have a great day. Everyone's going to be in there red, white, and blue. And yeah. if, you, if you have a family like mine, you got little kids running around and, and they're having a blast. And, you know, you got the dog. Everyone, every, every, every person in my family owns a dog, it seems like. So the dogs will be running around too. And Americana at its finest in the yeah. heat in South Carolina. Hot. Just hot. Just take a second and just think about how good you got it. Yeah. Like for everything that we talk about on here every day, and I know we're running late. For everything we talk about on here every day, we we, you know the the issues and the problems and and everything going on. Even on her worst day, there is no greater country on the face of this planet than the United States of America. Nope. And so, just for if it's only just for twenty seconds, maybe I'm just a really old school patriot at heart i don't know just remember that what we have isn't full of gold it's well, that's it's true the real deal it's, i'll agree with it's that it's the real deal so as you celebrate july 4th as you celebrate independence day we encourage you to do that think about your freedoms give give thanks i think i think thanksgiving can be given on any day but certainly on july 4th we give thanks for the sacrifices that have been made to secure our freedom and enjoy the day with the family. Enjoy enjoy the backyard baseball game and enjoy the barbecue or the boiled peanuts or the or the low country boil or the or, or the sweet tea or the the water. Melon. Yeah. 
I'm actually coming around. Like I'm coming around on you watermelon. Are. I grew up hating watermelon. Oh. I, my wife has taught me how to Dude. savor it, and now it's becoming more and more delicious. Tomorrow will be the first July Fourth in my lifetime where I eat a piece of watermelon and enjoy a piece. it. Good for you, buddy. Well, at least one piece. I I'm mean, like, it'll be more. It'll be you, more. You, it's like you, a Lay's potato chip. You cute people that cut it in slices. Okay. My dad and I used to quarter that sucker out. Yes. You get a quarter, you get a quarter, you get a quarter, you get a quarter. Then, then you know, enjoy the backyard baseball game. If, you're, if your favorite team has won eight games in a row and they're playing t- tomorrow on, on July 4th, enjoy them winning their 10th straight game, America's team, the Atlanta Braves. As you, t- as you take the time, just keep these things in mind. And remember... Remember why we celebrate the day. I think it's important why we celebrate freedom and we and we give thanks for our freedom. We'll be back later this week with probably a less contemplative type of show <laughs> and talking about the issues that matter to you. But if you want to get involved in the work we're doing at Palmetto Family Mitch, how can folks well, do They that? can do it several different ways. If you are on a smartphone, which most of you are probably listening to us right now, and if you have the app, thank you. If you don't have right. the app, download the Palmetto Family app wherever you get your apps, whether that's Apple, whether that's Google Play, whether that's Spotify and Roku with digital content that's exclusive to those channels, go get the Palmetto Family app. You can go to palmettofamily.org where you'll find all the latest updates and, and alerts that you need on a myriad of topics, not just inside the state of South Carolina, which is very important, but from around the nation. Right. Listen to this podcast. Give us that five-star review. And if you feel led check out our website in the investment page and help us help you. Seriously, help us continue to do what we're doing to make sure that South Carolina is a great state to live and work and raise a family. So if you're from Detroit or Houston or New York or L.A., uh, from sea to shining sea. Well done. Um, you know. Well done. Crank up the Lee Greenwood, my friend. Crank up Lee Greenwood and just play a little bit louder. God bless the USA. Until next time. For Mitch Prosser, I'm Justin Hall. Thanks so much for listening to and watching the fastest-growing and strongest conservative talk show in the state of South Carolina, the Palmetto Family Matters Show.